Hi, in this video I'm going to look at some different binary structures and decide if they are groups or not. So first let's recall the definition of a group. A group is a set G closed under the binary operation star such that the following axioms are satisfied. G must have an identity element, every element in G must have an inverse in G, and the binary operation star must be associative. Let's start by looking at the set of natural numbers with addition. And remember that the set of natural numbers is just the set containing all positive whole numbers. First we have to check for closure. So we need to make sure that if x and y are natural numbers, x plus y must also be a natural number. And this is of course true because if we have a positive whole number plus a positive whole number, we're always going to get a positive whole number. The next thing we need to look for is that it has an identity element. And this is where this one falls short, because the identity element for addition is zero, but zero is not in the set of natural numbers. So let's try to modify this set to include an identity element. Now we'll have the set of natural numbers with the zero element and the binary operation addition. And we know that this is closed under addition, and we also know now that zero is the identity element for this. So the next thing we have to check is that it has inverses but this one actually does not have inverses. For example, if we took the element one, one is clearly in this set, but in order to find an inverse, we need an x in this set that satisfies this equation. And if we solve for x here, we get that x equals negative one, but negative one is not an element in our set. So again, this is not a group. Let's go ahead and try to modify it once more to include inverses. Now we have this set of integers with addition, and we know that this set is closed under addition. We also know this set contains the zero element, so it has an identity, and we know that every element in this set has an inverse. The last thing is that we know that addition is associative, so this is a group. And in a similar way, we can show that the rationals with addition, the real numbers with addition, and the complex numbers with addition are all groups. The next example I want to go through involves matrices. So first I'm going to define the set S to be the set containing all n by n diagonal matrices. And a diagonal matrix is a matrix where the only non-zero elements are the ones lying on the diagonal. So an n by n diagonal matrix would look something like this, where the only non-zero elements are here on this diagonal and everything else is a zero. Now I want to look at the structure S along with matrix multiplication and I want to ask the question if this is a group. So let's go ahead and go through our definition and see if this is a group or not. First, we need to check for closure. So if we have A and B, which are both n by n diagonal matrices, so they're both in our set S, we need to show that A times B, where this is matrix multiplication, we need to show that this is also in our set S. And this is true, because let's say we call this one, this matrix A, and we'll write this second matrix and call this matrix B, then when we multiply this out, we would get this matrix, where we have this is A1 times B1, A2 times B2, AN times BN, and as you can see, this is also a diagonal matrix. So this is in our set S. And so if you don't understand why this is the case, it might be helpful for you to review matrix multiplication and how it works. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to move on. The next thing we need to look at is the first axiom, which is that this must have an identity element. And the identity element for matrices looks something like this. And since this is a diagonal matrix, we can say that this is in our set S. And we'll usually call this one I sub N. So this one here will be in the nth row and the nth column. And we would call this the identity element for an N by N matrix. And this is in our set S. And we can say that for all A in our set S, A times the identity element equals the identity element times A, which equals A. So this does have an identity element. Next, we need to look at the second axiom, which says that every element must have an inverse. But here's where we start to see an issue, because any element with a zero in the diagonal will not have an inverse. For example, this matrix is in our set S because it is a diagonal matrix. Even though it has zeros here, this is still a diagonal matrix because everything else is still zeros. But there is no element in our set S 
that can give an inverse to this because there is no number that when you multiply it by zero can give us one. So really any diagonal matrix that has a zero as one of these entries on the diagonal will not have an inverse. So this is not a group. Now let's look at this structure where we have the set of integers modulo 4 with the operation being addition modulo 4. And if you've never seen this, this set is just the set containing the elements 0, 1, 2, and 3. And these elements are actually equivalence classes. So every integer can be considered to be equivalent to one of these numbers if we take it modulo 4. So let's first check for closure. So in order to be closed, we need that any element in this set added to another element or itself in the set must give us again an element in this set. But we're not using regular addition, we're using addition modulo 4. So for example, if we took 3 plus 2, this equals 5. But 5 modulo 4 actually equals 1. And 1 again is in our set. So any way we add any numbers in here, we're just going to wrap it back around the number 4, and we're going to get back an element in our set. So this is closed under addition modulo 4. Next, let's see if this has an identity. So the identity element here will be this 0 element, or this 0 equivalence class. So if we have any x in the set of integers modulo 4, x plus 0 is always just going to give us x. So this will be our identity element. Let's look at inverses next. So 0 is obviously its own inverse because 0 plus 0 equals 0. 1 has the inverse 3 because 1 plus 3 equals 4, which is actually 0 modulo 4. 2 is its own inverse because 2 plus 2 equals 4, which equals 0 modulo 4. And then 3, of course, has 1 as an inverse because that's 0 modulo 4. So every element in our set has an inverse. The last thing we need to check is that this addition modulo 4 is associative. And addition modulo 4 is associative because if we take elements a, b, and c in the set of integers modulo 4, and then if we take a plus b, where we're using this modular 4 addition, plus c, we can write this as a plus b modular 4 plus C mod 4, and then we can simplify this to A plus B plus C, where all of this is modulo 4. Now, of course, we know that regular addition is associative, so we can change the inside here to look like this, and then this will all be still modulo 4. And now, if we expand this out in a similar way which we did here, and then simplify it, what we get is that this will equal a plus b plus c. And with that, we can conclude that addition modulo 4 is associative because this is exactly what it means to be associative. We changed the parentheses and we changed the order and we still were able to get the same result. So the integers modulo 4 with addition modulo 4 is a group. And that's all for this video, so good luck with your studies.